Welcome back to another episode of the Supercar Killer M3 presented by Turn 14 Distribution. Today we're changing gears a bit and working on the rear end. We are back and getting at it with the Supercar Killer M3 and we are beyond excited to be putting this 2J into our M3 chassis. As you saw at last episode, a lot of you are very upset about it and a lot of you are very excited about it. We knew it was gonna be a polarizing swap. Yes, there were a lot of options out there, but as we explained, 2J for us is the way to go. However, we're switching gears today and working on the rear end here because it definitely needs some addressing. This car is high mileage. We don't know the condition of the subframe and whether we have cracks in the chassis. So. The first order of business today is dropping this and it is a lot of work, so it is time to get to it. that the rear subframe and all of its appendages are off the car and it wasn't too bad it, the, the tricky part of course is the e-brake cables they fish through the subframe here and they they but they sort of like bind up so to get those out is really the key to being able to lower this thing without them being hung from the cables like we struggled with on the cabriolet build so those came out relatively easily which let us drop this thing down and as you can see it is in rough crusty shape. She's crusty, so we're gonna send this off for uh, blasting and powder coating with our friends at Stripping Tech in Cambridge, Ontario. I just cleaned up the area where our bolts were mounted into to see if the subframe was cracked, and holy smokes, this side is not that bad at all. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's got a little bit of a crack running this way and just starting to split this way. So not too bad, this will be a quick and easy fix. I'll be able to weld that guy up. And on this side over here, I'm so glad we did drop the subframe because holy crap, look at the crack. This one runs all the way through here and all the way up in this area. So this is one hell of a doozy. I haven't seen anything like that before. That's gonna require some serious effort, some welding, some grinding to clean that up. Uh, the good news is the back side here, both of these are clean. So we don't have to touch that. All right, before we get to these, actually, we're gonna tear that subframe down because we gotta get a rush delivery of all these parts over to Stripping Tech. of defeat. <laughs> we have pretty much tried everything to get this half shaft out of the hub. and It's not going. I don't know what we're gonna do. So we're going to consult the Oracle, the internet, maybe some shop friends, professionals to see what we need to do here. But um, 
What our last attempt was, we were going to try to separate this axle out and then we could get this into the press hopefully, but that's not, po it, it doesn't look like it's possible or I'm not sure how this goes together. So I don't know guys, this is a moment of low right now, but we're gonna regroup, come back and eventually remove this. All right, so it is time to get back to trying to get that seized axle shaft out of the hub. And as you can see, we are in a different area, place. NV Auto, of course, we decided to turn to the experts on this one to see if Nam's gonna be able to help me crack this sucker loose because I'm out of ideas. I do wanna thank a lot of you who posted on social media as to how to do this. I've tried a lot of it. So the last thing left here is to try a better air hammer. I think Nam, that's gonna be Nam's first step and then we'll go from there. We are turning to, bam, acetylene torch here, Nam? Yeah. All right, let's see how this goes. I did try this, but you're gonna air hammer this after, right? I'm yeah. assuming. Oh my God. Yeah. I missed the first part there, but wow. Okay, so what did you do? Because I see some extra lube. Yeah, so what we did is after we heated it up and it got all you know hot and expanded and stuff, we hit it with some penetrant fluid. What and is that stuff? Just so people could see. So that's just some, just some generic penetrant fluid that we have sitting around here that we use. Okay, so nothing uh, special. So what we do is, as you can see, is when we heat, when we spray it in there, it actually, the penetrant fluid actually goes into the splines which uh, when it cools down, you get a little bit of penetrant fluid that breaks down inside there to go against the rust and the metal. And then we hit it again with the, pen, uh, with the uh, air chisel and the axe came right through. So a lot of times it helps when it cools down a bit too that the metal actually contracts after it cools down. They hit it with the air chisel and it comes out. So that's one side done. Okay, let's, yeah, yeah, let's try the other side. And just to, for you guys to know, the other side we haven't touched yet. So it may actually be easier because you were saying the way I was heating it up, I was localizing too much of the heat around the center of it, right? Yeah, so you're heating up the axle, which expands the axle. Yeah, that was a mistake. And then because you didn't get it to move at all, when it, when it cooled down and contracted, it might have, you know, kind of welded itself with the rust and the other metal. So that didn't help me either. But we'll see if the other side that you haven't touched is a little bit better. Yeah! Wow, so that went way easier. You didn't even have to spray it. Yeah, see what happens when Pete doesn't touch the gun. Yeah! <laughs> Next time I'm coming straight to you, man. Thank you so much. No problem. That was wicked. Now we can move on to removing these wonderful hubs. Back at the shop, and once again, I have to thank Nam. I didn't think that axle was going to come out and we were gonna have to replace this whole thing, but he saved us. So Nam, I bow down to you. Moving on here, now it is time for us to remove our hub. And as you can see, I've already bolted on our slide hammer tool. And what I'm gonna do is hook this up here and hopefully this will come out a little bit easier, but the way things have been going, you never know. Woo! Is it moving? Uh, I don't know, DP. I don't <laughs> know. Oh. <laughs> Victory. Okay. Part one is down. Holy smokes. Race on there. Oh, and there's Ball part two. There. Yeah. Oh, I see there's like an actual snap ring in there. Weird. Next challenge up here is going to be to remove this circlip, which then houses the bearing that we have to remove now. So 
let's see. I kind of gave it a couple taps to see if I can move it. There it goes. It's moving. Oh, I think it might come out on one side DP and the other side is kind of like seized in there. So oh, I don't yeah. know. I'm not sure what. You need to heat it up some more maybe? Uh, or just keep doing that. Brute force and ignorance. It's time to be destructive again. So what I've done is given up on actually crimping this. I think it's just too rusty up in this area here. So I've got the pliers. I'm just gonna bend this out slowly until I get it to a point where it'll come out on both sides. It's just it's so much rust. In there, yeah. So much rust. Oh, oh sweet. Well, Victory. I threw in this herb clip. So slide hammer's attached to this end here, which I'm hoping may have enough force to push this bearing out. Not that that circ clip is gone, so let's see what happens. Unfortunately, it doesn't sit tight in there, so I gotta kinda hold it. Slide hammer wasn't working, so it's time for the press. And as you can see, this is a much nicer, safer setup here, so Let's see how this goes. I'm pretty confident with enough force, this will come out. Right. Uh, I think it's going. It's moving. Yes, victory. Okay. <laughs> victory. Whoo wee. Man, it has been a full battle. Full battle with this. But I'm proud to say we have conquered it. And that means now, well, actually we have these bushings to press out, but these guys are pretty simple. We've got tools for those. Once these are out, this is a clean arm. We can get it powder coated. With all those rear parts off to powder coat, it is now time to tackle the bigger job, and that is the rear floor where the subframe bolts up is very prone to cracking on these cars. If you're an E46 guy, you know all about this problem. It's apparently related to the fact that there's two layers here, and they're not bonded together very well at the factory, and there's flexing that happens back here, and it causes these cracks. And with the sort of like rubberized undercoating on the car, we couldn't really see a lot of crackings when we first dropped the subframe, but now that Pete's taken the uh, wire wheel on the drill and cleaned that all off. We can see we got some pretty serious cracking here. So we're gonna have to drill a little hole at the ends of all of these cracks to prevent them from spreading. And then we will weld in our Bimmer World reinforcement plates. It's a very affordable kit. I think it's like $129 on their website. Comes with four plates for each of those four locations as well as I think two little guys that go here if I'm not mistaken. And this is a weld-in solution. So. To do this yourself, you need to know how to weld. You need to prep the uh, metal like we have already. And uh, it's gonna be a bit of a job to do this. We obviously did this before on our, on our drift car, so it's a job that Pete now has some experience with and we'll knock it out relatively quickly. And what was about 30 to 40 seconds of time-lapse video took about, I'd say three plus hours to do. There's a lot of manual labor in this. However, we do have these plates in place now. What uh, you saw was I prepped the surfaces, then kind of spot welded the plates on. Then I ran seam sealer all the way around the edges and painted them with a rust uh, encapsulator at the end here. So they are sealed in place. 
What we aren't doing is the trunk area. Bimmer World does recommend it. If you're building a car that's gonna see a lot of heavy track use, then you can do that. However, we have a, what I deem, simpler solution for that fix. Lifting these Swedish weights, PT. This is our uh, new trunk brace slash subframe brace from Pure Tech Sweden. You can follow them on Instagram, at Pure Tech Sweden. As far as we can tell, this is a brand new company and uh, they don't have a website yet, so just go follow them on Instagram, but they reached out to Pete and said, hey, do you wanna try this out in your car? It helps a lot with uh, stiffening up the rear end as you expect with a trunk brace like this, but it also helps prevent that cracking issue that these cars suffer from because of the floors flexing. It's really that the whole chassis flexing that causes that cracking, and this bar should get rid of that flex. So this goes a long way to preventing future cracking on our car and on your car too. So it's a really uh, clean design too. Like, look at how nice the quality of the welds are on it. Yeah, it's, it's a nicely beauty. gusseted. And uh, these- cool uh, two-piece design. Yeah, these are bolted on for the shock towers, which by the way, these also reinforce the shock towers, which apparently are, are also prone to cracking on these cars. So. Uh, and it bolts through here into the subframe. So this actually becomes one with the subframe and the shock towers and reinforces all those areas. So we will show you how to install this right now. Of course, without the subframe on the car, we'll just show you how it goes into the trunk portion of it. And uh, they provide longer bolts that go through this, through the subframe, tighten it in from the bottom, and you've got yourself a match made in heaven. So thank you, Pure Tech Sweden, for sending this over. We're excited to put this in the car. It is always a treat to have instructions and Pure Tech Sweden provides the ultimate instructions. Look at these are even laminated with high res color pictures too. Wow. Look at this. Amazing. Love it. Good job guys. And I've got to say the first really neat thing is they supply a bolt. So to drill, you need to drill up through the, the subframe here. And uh, I was like, oh, okay, well this could walk a little bit and maybe potentially damage the threads, but no, they've supplied a bolt that they've machined through. So now all I do is slide this supplied drill bit, which is extra long in, and I go like this, and we'll have our hole. How cool is that? Up next, we are gonna use a hole saw and drill out the first layer here of sheet metal on the floor. And that is why we drilled that pilot hole. So we have a perfect placement for it. So without further ado, here we go. All right, so now what I've done is used a 13 mil drill bit and just went down deep enough so that it exposes the threads from below. So now we're gonna be able to pass this long bolt through here and then we'll be able to secure this whole brace. And here is our shock tower base installed. As you can see, we just had to drill two more holes on opposite sides of the shock tower here to secure this thing, but it is in there nice. So we're just gonna do the other side and we can finally get this thing bolted in place here. Finished product right there. Man, that looks good. And as a bonus, of course, it is structural. So I think this is a really good solution to uh, not having to weld the whole floor area here. It's a little bit messy. This is cleaner. It still requires a little bit of drilling and whatnot, but you also get this wicked brace. So. I think that is officially a wrap on this episode. Thank you so much for watching. We certainly do appreciate the, the uh, support. And I think I'm gonna finish this one off by eating some Haribus. Thank you, Pure Tech Sweden, for sending these bad boys.